Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, one of the most significant leaders in the state when it comes to dealing with uh, the population that is uh, homeless and dealing with poverty. Uh, she is Connie Mercer, uh, founder and executive director of an organization called Homefront in Lawrenceville, New Jersey? Mercer County. Yeah. Homefront is? Homefront fights to, to make sure that homeless families that are trying to work their way out of homelessness and poverty um, have the rungs on the ladder to do it. And most importantly, to make sure that their children have a shot at a real future. How many people are we talking about, Connie? On any given night, Homefront's providing shelter to about 450 people, most of them kids, most of them under the age of three. Okay, so you have a fascinating background. You, uh, you're a headhunter, right? You're successful at it. You're out there making a few bucks, more than a few bucks, right? What happens to you one night? A friend, a pediatrician um, who worked for the Child Welfare Agency came to me, took me out of my fancy offices <laughs> and said, you need to come with me and see what's going on in your community. He took me out to the motels along the Route 1 corridor and what I saw horrified me. They were filled with women and children and no place for a woman to heat a baby bottle, baby's bottle or to provide food for their child or no place for a kid to do homework, certainly no place to play. And at the, we saw hundreds of families literally warehoused. Hundreds? Hundreds. Hundreds of families literally well, why warehoused. Why do you use the word warehoused? Oh, because there's nothing other, there's no other word that works. They were abandoned. They were um, left to rot in these God-forsaken motel rooms. Why were they and, in motel rooms? Um, because they were homeless, and that was government's response at the time, was to put them into motel rooms, but not to provide any social services, not to provide any way out. This was, the, excuse me, this government policy. This was... To put them in hotels. This was what government was doing in Mercer County, and no longer does. But across the rest of the state, that's still the norm. Why? Because... Afford, there isn't enough affordable housing and there aren't other answers that folks have chosen, chosen to embrace. So, so describe what it is like, not just for the women, because there are disproportionately women without men. Mm -hmm. but what is it also like for those children? What are they dealing with and what is the impact on them? There have been all sorts of studies about what happens to homeless kids. Um, not only are they desperately behind at school, they are sicker, they have many more emotional issues, and it's different. It, it, they're even score lower on all of the tests of health and um, flourishing than do other children who are in poverty. The fact of being homeless is so debilitating Parents can't pay attention because they are so overwhelmed and living in chaos. And so, so, so before we go back to your organization, I'm curious about this. What do you say to people who say things like, we're in the middle of a presidential campaign right now, but it doesn't really matter. It could be after the campaign. You'll hear people kind of say things like, listen, anyone, you're smiling because you know where I'm going to go. Anyone can make it in this country. Anyone can overcome any circumstance if they decide that they want to make it, if they just work hard. Talk about these children and just working hard and overcoming oh, their we, surroundings. Go ahead. We hear that. We hear that all the time. You say? And, and oh, if it were only true, our families want to make it. What, the first thing they ask us, is there a job for me? Can you help me get work? But when they are reading at a third grade level, when they have no child care, when they have no transportation, when they have no roof over their head, it's almost impossible. And I, I will point out that currently over 60% of the families we serve 
have an adult who works at least 40 hours a week. So what is it that your organization does for them? Because you don't want to give them a handout. You don't want to just give them something. Don't you want to provide them the resources and the tools to be able to go out and do what it is they want to do with their families? And that's what we're about. Describe it. That's what we're about. First of all, we've got to give them, take care of their very basics, food and shelter. But once they have food and shelter, we need to make sure that they are in a literacy-rich environment, that they learn to read if they can't read, and if they need a high school diploma. So many of our folks don't have a high school diploma. We help them get the high school diploma. How do you do that? Oh, we have wonderful teachers, wonderful volunteer tutors, um, lots of folks who work with them around their dyslexia, things that have never happened before. We give them the environment that says you can do it and we are here to help you do it. What about the prospect of a job? You can't give them a job. We get 20 to 30 people a month, folks who, who have been on welfare, who have been unemployed, we help them secure employment. Really? Yeah. How? Once you help them feel that they can do it, once you give them the tools, once you get them dressed up, there are there are jobs that they can do. The problem, Steve, though, is once we get them jobs, too many of the jobs don't pay a living wage. So a job is not the only answer in this incredibly wealthy community. Our families, if they get a job at minimum wage, they would need to work three full-time mm. jobs, three full-time jobs in order to afford a fair market rate apartment. Kind of, let me ask you this. You've been working at this for a while. Long time. How would you describe the current state of homelessness and poverty in the state of New Jersey? It's, in many ways, it's worse than it's been. In some ways, it's better. When we started 25 years ago, what we primarily saw were long-time welfare folks who never thought that their life would be any different. Now we see way too many. We don't see that much anymore. We never saw any men. Now 10 to 15 percent of the families we're dealing with have men that are actively involved, mm. um, even heads of households, single daddies. Mm. Um, but we see folks who work and who still can't afford to put a roof over their babies' heads. Um, we see government stepping back. Government stepping back. Government stepping back at all levels. Every level. Every level. Local, county, Lo local. state, yes. federal. Yes. You see it? Yes. Because? Because they think the problem's solved? There are all sorts of reasons why government's stepping back. We do know that as government step back, the public has to step forward. We do fear that the safety net that has been placed, put in place is being shred very quickly in New Jersey. Um, and you actually, and, sorry for interrupting, just had to move from your previous location to a new location. We did. We were blessed with our new location. We have moved to a, um, de a decommissioned military base, and a Navy station. Um, You're showing right there. Beautiful. We, we have Groundbreaking. Go ahead. We have literally taken swords and converted them into plowshares. It's a magnificent eight and a half acre campus. So Where's your money come from? We do a damn good job of fundraising. <laughs> you sure do. The, the community has been incredibly supportive of us. Um, we've worked hard to make sure that the community, our Mercer County community, is saying loud and clear, it's not okay with us if there are hungry homeless kids. And that's what we believe everybody in the state needs to say. I'm curious about something. One more time for the children. Long-term impact on the children who deal with poverty and homelessness. 30 seconds. Remind the, us. The long-term impact is incalculable. The ones I'm particularly concerned of are the pregnant women who, if they're homeless, they cannot take care of themselves so that babies are born not healthy. Forever we have the costs of that to bear. And the child has the costs to bear if, if they are not in a stable environment. Connie Mercer, the founder and executive director of a terrific organization called Homefront in Mercer, Mercer County. County. Thank you, Connie.
Thank you, Steve. You're a good friend to the program and to public television. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks, Connie. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, New Jersey Resources, Sovereign Health System, Oscar Health Insurance, NJM, ADP, and by the Fidelco Group. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.